شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back everyone uh, In this video we're going to look at the importance of practicing what's called gradualism and we take this inspiration from a verse in the Quran which happens to be in the ninth juice of the Quran and it's verse 142 of Surah Al-A'raf, the seventh chapter in the Quran. Um, the background to this is that Allah uh, mentions in the Quran that we made a promise with Musa for 30 nights, then we supplemented them with 10. So the total period fixed by his Lord was 40 nights. Um, so Allah told Musa والسلام, when his community was saved um, that he should turn towards him and spend um, 30 and then it was made into 40 altogether days dedicated to Allah so that they might receive some religious guidance and religious instruction. Um, and it's very, very interesting when I talk to my Jewish friends that there's a lot of similarities, at least when it comes to law, uh, between Judaism and Islam. When you look at the Sharia and you look at the uh, law of the Jewish community, that there's more similarities between us and them than the Christian community. The Christian community don't have anything like a Sharia or a law um, like the Jews or the Jewish community and the Muslim community have as well. And that's a separate conversation. It's a very interesting conversation for some other time as well. But what I want to focus upon is what's discussed here is that we learn that by Allah asking Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, Moses to spend some time away he was also teaching him that law, when it's revealed or when you want change to happen, it takes time. Um, Rome, as they say, was not built overnight. And so it's not befitting for people to be um, hasty and to hurry any good work that needs to take place. Things take time. And it's challenging because in our day and age, everything is fast. We have fast food, fast everything. Um, but for success to happen, sometimes... We need gradualism. And when you think about um, developing your children, giving them tarbiyah, that also requires day in, day out effort upon them as well. Allah, for example, we're reminded in the Quran, He could have, with His power and His will, created the entire universe in a matter of seconds or less. But in the Quran, we're reminded that it was created in six days. This idea that things take time to do is a teaching moment for us as well, something to reflect upon. So if you want to achieve something, and this is a practical step, I would suggest to people is to write down what their end goal is and then work backward. Write down what is it that you want to do. For example, you might want to write a book and to sit down, it would be foolhardy to think that you can write a book in a day. What you could say is every morning I'm going to wake up, I'm going to spend an hour writing a page or half a page and eventually over a certain period of time I'll have written a book. So things are best done the region slowly and it's not befitting for them to be rushed. Similar when we think about the month of Ramadan, many of us will be on spiritual highs in this month already and we'll be thinking about how we want to continue beyond the month of Ramadan. The reality is many of us will, will, will struggle as we go back to our normal lives, we go back to work. So think about, well, what do I want to achieve before next Ramadan if Allah gives me a long life? Um, what can I achieve by then? What can be realistic? What can I pray every day? What can I do every day? What good work can I do? What can I get involved in? And so practicing gradualism is very, very important. The Prophet, peace be upon him, is reported to have said, That the most beloved act with Allah, actions with Allah, are those which one person has um, istiqamat upon, which is done regularly rather than rushed, rather than doing it all in one go, even if it's little, even if you're just praying one page of the Quran every day, but you're able to do it every day without fail, that's success, right? If you're just able to do a small amount of charity, but you're doing it every day, that's success. So the most beloved actions with Allah are those which are done with um, istiqamat, that are done regularly, even if they, they may be little. And a person can over time improve upon them. So we start with the basics, which is that we ensure that we perform our five daily prayers. Once we're able to do that, then we try to get to the masjid and perform it when we are able to do that. And then we make sure that we pray our sunnah, our nawafil, etc. So this is a way of thinking about how we can maintain our istiqamat. This is very, very important. 
especially nowadays in age where people get spiritual highs and spiritual lows and they try and do everything in one one go no a good sheikh uh, a good sheikh will guide you gradually and say oh, well you just do a little bit now you don't need to um, overburden yourself right you don't need to overkill yourself and this is very very important to bear in mind because our religion is about ease it's about facilitating people on their spiritual journey to their creator and this month is really about lifting our ambitions our hopes our um, hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking Allah to give us the ability to perform righteous acts to do them regularly so that it becomes a habit for us what we call in Arabic the malaka this malaka means this idea that it just becomes natural for you it's not something that you think about anymore it's something that you do day in day out so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all this ability until next time assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh